Welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. My name is Grin, your host, and we have co-host Michael Doherty. How are you doing, Michael? I'm good, Grin. How are you? Fantastic. Uh, I Not as good as you, though, I'm pretty sure. You just uh, got back from Shore Leave 35, which is the convention out there. Um, you want to talk about it, or do you want to talk about something else before we go into that? Uh, I don't know. I can, I can talk about... Um, Either that or, I don't know, I guess that, talking about the convention will lead me to the other two things I mainly want to talk about, so. Excellent. Let's get to it. So, how about this convention? Where Where's the convention at, exactly? Well, it's Shore Leave 35, or just Shore Leave in general, it's uh, held in the same place every year, uh, is in Hunt Valley, Maryland. It's one of two conventions, as far as I know of, that are you know, two sci-fi conventions in Maryland every year. It's uh, Shore Leave and then Far Point, which is in February. Are you gonna go far point? Are you going to go to far point as well? Well, I mean, short leave last year was my first time going to a convention, and I was planning on going to far point as well this previous February, but I didn't. Uh, but I believe I'm going to try, if for only if only to have a safe sci-fi panel at far point. I think I'm going to go to do a panel as well. Excellent, excellent. Looking forward to that. So, what's the uh, what's the plan or? What was the plan, and how did it, how did it all happen for Shore Leave Thirty Five? Ah, what's this? Because <laughs> I heard you had some trouble getting Shore Leave Thirty Five all set up. Uh oh, lost you again. <laughs> Where'd you go, Mike? There you are. Okay, I am back again. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, say or please repeat yourself. <laughs> okay, uh, where I heard you had some trouble getting it all set up, but you you managed. to uh, tell me tell me about that. Okay, well, <laughs> um, so I uh, yeah, they they were, and in the end, were you know hurrying last minute scheduling, um, you know doing all the schedules at the very last minute it seemed and. Well, you know, because Sal and Eugene, they, my other panelists, uh, they couldn't make it Friday or Sunday, so it had to be Saturday. Well, I requested it, and I promised it, and in the end, it got scheduled for Friday. Hmm. Um, <laughs> it was just that, uh, yeah, she got the my uh, contact got confused, and with all the stuff going on, and I course i completely understand i was frantically you, you know how frantic i was trying to <laughs> trying to get all the set up get, yes get and all getting the all the flyers from everybody yeah yeah i mean it was friday night uh i was i mean i stayed up till three or four in the morning uh for spent two or three hours working on making the packets of the, <laughs> that i was going to hand out at the uh panel um but uh Basically, with the with what happened, um, the schedule got put out and sent to press, uh, and they you know, started printing it all out with before I could get it corrected. So the panel uh, was registered, listed for Friday, and um, you know the printed out ones all reflected that. They did change. They thankfully had a room open. Um, Though it co- coincided with William Shatner's talk, huh. but uh, I mean, there, he only had a limited amount of seats, so everybody else had nowhere else to be except for looking at panels. So I figured it was that or the masquerade ball, which had no limit. So I figured Shatner's might be a better time to compete against. But you know, unfortunately, we didn't have a huge audience. We only had, <laughs> not counting my family, <laughs> we had maybe. Six, seven, maybe eight people total come in, uh, but uh, you know, and unf- yeah, that's it was a victim of the of the scheduling errors, I think, because you know the day before, I uh, you know on Friday I got stopped in the hallway by two women uh, saying that you know, oh I I had you know we saw the, the you know save sci-fi on the panel on the schedule, and we were wondering what is this all about you know, and I was thrilled. And um, I'm guessing that they probably had to talk to Shatner because they said they were going to go. They didn't show up, but, you know, 
they, if they paid twenty, if they paid money to go to see Shatner, I expect them to go see Shatner. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, you know, I, of course, the panel was not a total loss. Um, There's, you know, we had one guy who came in. He was extremely, extremely interested in this all. You know, he had said he told us how. You know, he saw it on the schedule. He want, really wanted to go last night, but it got canceled, he said. And he's like, when he said that when he saw the uh, corrected schedule on the walls and he saw that it was going on, going on Saturday, he was really thrilled and he was very involved. Excellent. Um, Another thing is, I mean, when you're, when you're talking about these, these conventions, it's not all about the panels. I mean, the panels are great to, to get to know your fans and, and to talk about your your project with people who come in and want to know about it but a lot of it is networking you go to the convention you meet people you're walking around they see your t-shirt you know save sci-fi hey what's that you, you start a conversation maybe you know you see some of the the actors or people walking around and and maybe they'll get interested in your your t-shirt or save sci-fi in general hey what's this all about you know and you start a conversation and network you know with all the people I think that's more important than the actual panel. However, the panel is important to get your flyers out and to tell people about the projects that you're working on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, overall, you know, the convention was most certainly not a loss in any way, and that's part of what I'm going to talk. Part of what I want to say in a few minutes, in a little bit. But uh, you know, one way or another, you know, we also re-recorded the panel. And so, and I will be uploading that to YouTube soon for us to get edited, um, to have edited and everything. And so that's going to be available to anybody who um, wants to go and watch the panel afterwards. You know, Eugene and Sal both uh, talked about their separate projects, Cardinal for Sal, and Eugene talked about Stargate Universe, the animated fan series. And that one got actually a lot of questions from a very few, a very small amount of people. <laughs> so, but uh, th- that was it was great for both of them. Um, you know, we got talking about nobility, showed the posters to to the people who came. So, you know, whether they came to the panel or not, people can now will now be able to see it online. And so, so how, how's that's the like, audio in that? Did you guys have I, a microphone set up to the camera? No. Oh. <laughs> Um, I, let me put it this way. We put a, put a camera on a tripod and, you know, and we filmed it. So it's a pretty good camera. I, I would expect that it's going to have at least adequate sound quality. I hope. <laughs> now you're making me worry. We'll, we'll have to set <laughs> this up for next time. Uh, you, you should record your audio separately. So uh, next okay. time we'll, we'll make sure that we we do some sort of audio recording separately and then and then mix the two later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm d- I'm brand new to this, so <laughs> unless you can, uh, well, most people don't have a camera that has a an audio input, and, and honestly, a camera isn't meant to record audio; it's meant to record video. So you want to do your audio on something separate. Yeah, well, next time we will make sure that we do that if possible all right so what else do we have to talk about well i mean yeah i i do i do uh assuming i'm sure we'll have a little bit hopefully that i can brag a little bit about, about the uh awesome stuff that i got <laughs> no um i actually wanted to say i, I got to meet some of the yeah you know, i got to meet several celebrities at the panel at the uh, not at the panel at the convention uh, among those being um, authors David Mack, Keith R. A. I really don't want to mess this up, so I'm not going to say his last name. But uh, uh, okay, I'm going to try. Uh, Dick Dick and Dick and Dido. Dick 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 Handido. Uh, I'm not sure. I I don't know how to pronounce his name, <laughs> but I'm sure you can figure out who I'm talking about. Uh, I got to watch. I got to go attend a panel with them. Uh, um, Christopher L. Bennett, and the other was, I believe, Greg uh, Greg Cox. And they talked about Star Trek. You know, the books, the the new movies recently. Um, 
they were great. They were fantastic. It was a lot of fun listening to them. I got David Mack's autograph on my Destiny, Star Trek Destiny trilogy, which I loved his trilogy. But um, anyway, I got to uh, I got to meet um, Saul Rubinick and Eddie McClintock from Warehouse 13, both of them. Uh, Eddie McClintock was hilarious, so was uh, Saul Rubinick. Uh, Brent Spiner was fantastic guy, you know, got to meet him. Got to meet Amanda Tapping, which uh, comes into the, to what I, the one thing I do really want to uh, mention about what I got. It was incredible opportunity. But um, I also, the biggest thing for Save Sci-Fi directly was that I met Julie uh, Caitlin Brown. Uh, she played Natoth in Babylon 5. Oh, okay. And um, for those of you out there who know Babylon 5, uh, you know, she uh, didn't exactly look the way she does now in the show. <laughs> um, but... Uh, you know, she was had a really nice talk the first Friday night, and I did, and I got a chance to talk to her afterwards for a few minutes um, as she was leaving. And I gave her one of her flyers and mentioned our podcast. And she did say that she was interested, and she also said she was interested in coming to the panel on Saturday. But she didn't. She, she was unfortunately was unable to make the panel. Um, she got really busy. Uh, she also uh, books. She's also books. Uh, She's like uh, Amanda Tapping's booking agent, uh, agent, I believe. She books her at uh, different gigs and everything and handles her at the uh, conventions. But, um, yeah, she she just got really busy. And, of course, yeah, I totally understand that she's a, you know, an actress and, and a booking agent. She's, you know, she's busy, she's busy. But I talked to her on Saturday as well, and, you know, she still seemed very interested. And she even had me explain a bit to her son about Save Sci-Fi. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly how old he is, but he's, I think he's around 12, 13. Um, then today, I did get a chance to talk to her one last time, and she did confirm with me that she was definitely going to do the podcast. So she's going to come on here and, and uh, join us for the podcast in the near future. I've uh, got to contact her, um, and we're gonna find, uh, we're gonna check our schedule, pick a time and date, uh, make sure we'll have to make sure it works for you, Grin. And uh, but the point is that she is going to be joining us for our podcast. Cool. What's she gonna First, talk about? Are we gonna talk about one of her projects, or are we just gonna uh, get up with well, her and and see <laughs> what's going on in in her sci-fi uh, area in her? Well, I know she is working on something new, which. Uh, she uh she was telling us at the during her talk about this new i'm not quite, i can't quite remember exactly what it was it was either a series or a some project basically promoting you know science and math you know the sciences and everything through science fiction bringing it back to what it was you know, supposed to be you know not just guns and aliens and violent you know and you know wars and everything but really using the science fiction to again once again promote you know Science. the sciences and such yes and so i've been really interested in that and i wouldn't mind getting to ask her some more questions about that on the podcast so i've got a picture of her from the uh, uh website from the story league 25 website <clears throat> yeah she, she looks very different from the show yeah. she's she's uh actually she's gorgeous but uh beyond that you know i'm really interested to, to hear what kind of projects she's working on She's, she's also a, she's also a very talented singer. She is she let out she belted out a song for us there at the pan, at the uh, convention, cool. and it was it was fantastic. I'd like to hear a little bit about what it was like to be on uh, Babylon Five. Well, she it yeah, says it, here she was also on Star Trek: The Next Generation. She was she uh, uh, she played Vector. a uh, yeah she I, I'm trying to remember what uh, exactly what it was it was it was an alien um, it wasn't a human. But uh, she did. She did play on it. But uh, no, she has some very. She had some great stories about uh, Babylon Five. It was uh, maybe she'll she'd be willing to retell the story about uh, Andreas Katsoulis. 
he was that the story was great. We'll, 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 let, we'll let her tell yeah. the story. <laughs> I know, yeah. I wasn't gonna say anything before. I'm just <laughs> believe me, I, I want her to tell it. But uh it I can't wait for that podcast. Um so just wanted to let you guys all know that. Um the other thing in particular before you know we before we just chat a bit about everything, I guess, is that um Try to remember if we've mentioned this at all before the page, but um, Save Sci-Fi is going to be having its first original production um, by uh, your friend uh, Grin, right, uh, yeah. Brian? Yeah, Brian, good friend. Of uh, yep, called Project YXM, and we're going to be needing. We're going to be having auditions for audio uh, for voice actors. It's going to be a, what is it? like? It's like a narrated graphic novel, correct? Yeah, yeah I think that's that's what it is. I mean, uh, I, I haven't worked with Brian on it specifically, but... Uh, uh, I think that's what it is at this point in time. Uh, he he wanted to have it more than just a audio drama because he wanted to have some images to it. And uh, and it right now it's too much work for us to we don't have the resources to do you know a full animated show so you know I mean I know there I have on my tablet I've got this this uh, narrated graphic novel called Anarchy and it's very long and it's great and it's really good quality very long as well and uh, I love it and if we can have a similar type of format i think it will work out really well but um yes yeah, so basically for any of you guys listening uh and who's interested we're gonna have the main characters are younger characters they're you know i believe a 16 year old boy 15 year old girl and then a 12 and a 13 year old or within that age range for the four main characters of course there will be adult um you know, adult oh. characters, yes, that either reoccurring or, uh, or just come in for various, at uh, different times. Walk on roles or or speak on roles. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're going to issue a formal uh casting call at some point in the next month. I'd like to say. Um. So, if you're interested, keep listening, looking out for that. Sounds like I, a lot of fun. Yeah, I can't wait for it. Yeah, you know, I know I've got. One person, one, another one of the people I met, one of, another one of the teenagers I met at the uh, convention, she's interested in auditioning for uh, one of the characters, and maybe the other guy, maybe the others will be too. Um, so this is going to be I, re- really interesting to find people with a, a voice that can match the uh, characters, especially considering they're so, they're so young. But uh, there's a lot of ta- talented voice actors out there that can do stuff like that. So. If you are one of those talented people, or think you are, go ahead and let us know on the, the uh, Facebook page, and uh, maybe you can give us a sample of your voice, uh, some sort of quick recording, and uh, if you can, maybe you can just send a quick recording. Just go ahead and record uh, some lines from something. And send it to us. You can send it to uh, where should we send it? Where should we send it? Um. Uh, again, right this very moment, we. You know, I, I I don't think we're quite ready yet to actually get the recordings at this time. We're, we'll end up, I believe, issuing. Yeah, you know, we'll end up getting lists of who's interested in what roles. It will release character descriptions, and then. Uh, and then we'll probably end up sending some uh, set of lines for them to read off, and you know, in their in the voice, oh. yeah, you know, with their voice, and have them send them in to maybe an email that we'll set up specifically for that. But you know, I'm pl- I'm hoping to get that stuff done. Yeah, I'm hoping to get this the ball rolling in this in the next month. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah we'll. There. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, get, yeah, if people are interested. That's what matters. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I just wanted to know where to send my audition. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 should be interesting. 
if we yeah, and if and of a course really the... deep voice i can be the real <laughs> mean guy oh, i can be some guy who just pops in you know maybe some <laughs> scientist guy hey i could be a, a drug dealer or something you know hey wanna wanna buy this here skateboard that's not drugs but eh. <laughs> If we need a baby, we know where to go, Grin. Yeah, I got a baby. We got a baby. <laughs> she, she knows how to say, Wah! and, <laughs> but that's about it. Uh, my little sister knows how to say that, too, but she I think she's too old to do that for for uh, audio drama. She's 10 now. Uh, let's, not, let's not tell her I said that. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's the next part? What do we uh, I mean... Those those were two were the mi- biggest those were the biggest parts. I mean, I've got plenty more to say about the convention that we can just chat about. Um, all right, I mean, all right, you know, just to please my new friends. I uh, I'll I'll share a funny story from the convention okay. uh, if that's okay. Yeah, that's great. All right, so my friend uh, Miles and um, several other of the teenagers there. Well, uh, they found. A couch in the elevators. <laughs> they just found the couch in the elevator, and so they ended up r- sitting on the couch and riding it up and down. Huh. Uh, we, <laughs> yeah, now once I don't use elevators, <laughs> well, um, huh. Huh. so they ended up getting yelled at, and Why were they uh, at? Were well, they because for? because they didn't report it. And because they were Busy taking up... sitting in it, you know. <laughs> yes, they yeah, enjoy so that. comfortable. <laughs> and uh, well, he... so we, thought, we thought you guys just put this couch in there for people to sit down while they're writing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I gotta say, you know, it's <laughs> it wasn't something I expected to hear about the next day. <laughs> um, another thing, you know, one of my friends uh, lost her stuffed dolphin. Uh, she called it Dr. Blowhole. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so she spent, she spent well, at least a full day, if not two, looking for this dolphin. And it ended up being at the front desk the entire time. Oh, uh, so they had, the, the, the dolphin, I mean, the, what had happened was, uh, they, she had like, either, she left in the elevator or was it miles through in the elevator? One of the two. <laughs> and uh and when they came back when they called the elevator back it was gone so i uh, <laughs> that i uh, somebody uh, and got, somebody s- <laughs> dolphin napped uh what's the, how do you say that somebody kidnapped her <laughs> dolphin it just, it just i mean it's funny it just disappeared and she, so i was walking around and i would see these signs posted you know, taped up all over Saying, oh, I'm sorry, that's right. It wasn't Miles. It was somebody else. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, yeah, he's bad, but he's not that bad. No, um, <laughs> no, I was seeing these signs. Lost stuffed dolphin. Please report. Uh, uh, and, I mean, she, you see lost dog. Yes, yeah, she made signs and and taped them up around different places. Around the convention. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not something you'd expect to see. A stop, lost stuffed dolphin. Lost dog. Lost cat. <laughs> Lost gerbil even, but lost stuffed dolphin. Uh... Must have been a very <laughs> important stuffed dolphin. I guess so. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was stuffed with gold. No. I really hope not, because if it was, then I really then I missed a great opportunity. It was right next to me. Yeah. <laughs> you you, you uh, stole that. You, you <laughs> stole a dolphin full of gold from some girl. You're evil. Oh, from the this girl, she wouldn't have been that mad. I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't know, Abby. Would you? No, she'll she'll answer in a second. <laughs> no, but, um, the the other thing we also got to, we also got to do was we uh we ended up going to watch this uh basically almost like a science presentation, and uh, basically we learn how to blow up water. Blow up water. Yes. Uh, make the water uh, catch on fire and blow basically blow up. Um, what you do is you take about uh, was it ten, ten sparklers that do have magnesium in them, and you light them all 
So it goes up to you know, over a thousand degrees, mm-hmm. and you stick it in a jar of water. Uh, after they've all caught at once, and they uh, manage to disassociate the bonds and cause the hydrogen and oxygen to uh, almost explode. And it was it was interesting. I actually have a video of it, <laughs> and it was. Uh, it shocked all of us. Shall I what, say that? What, uh, what's that called when you separate the bonds uh, of oxygen and hydrogen from water? Oh God! I hope my science teacher from last year doesn't uh, watch this or listen called? to this. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The disassociation. Electrolysis? No, it's not. Is it electrolysis? I don't know. No, it's not electrolysis. <laughs> um, now, but uh, I, now I'm gonna have to Google this. <laughs> Separation of uh, hydro hydrogen from oh yeah it's already on there separation of hydrogen and oxygen from water hey Google you're my friend it's called yeah electrolysis yeah. okay yeah but in this case it wasn't electrolysis because there was no electricity in those sparklers nope well I mean I don't know I mean you. Depends on the form of it, the energy and such, but yeah, um, <laughs> it, it it was a very interesting um, experience. We also yes, we, got, uh, we also got to play with uh, propane, and the guy um, made managed to make this uh, mix a solution and uh, got, would put some of it on his hand, yeah, you know, like the soap. It with a what was it, Dawn soap detergent, water and such, and uh, and he was able to. Basically, he put it. He, you know, he picked up some of the suds and everything, and took the propane and you know, and lit it on fire, and it went up in flames on his hand, and then just went out without harming him. Hmm. It was it was really really cool. <laughs> so it was this like a science show? It, it was it was a yeah, it was a science show at the convention. It just you know, it, it happened to be in between some of the better some of the other, not better okay. <laughs> we rephrased that. that. What the we rephrased that. Yeah, the more, the, more, uh, the, the, the uh, bigger, the bigger stuff. Yeah, you know, I, the, the, I, I would have gone for the science show. I'd have been like, hey, you know. It, it was cool. great. It was great. It was right. It was right before my panel. Um, I used to love Mr. Wizard. Do you know uh, Mr. Wizard? Uh, Do you, um, uh, <laughs> uh, that's before your time. Wait. Um. Wasn't. Uh. Hold on a second. I think. Uh, for some reason, you probably, I can't... you probably remember Bill Nye the Science Guy. Oh, I love Bill Nye the Science Guy. One of my friends was in what was it in Florida or something at one point, and she saw Bill Nye the Science Bill Nye sitting out out at some outdoor restaurant, yeah, you know, outdoors some restaurant river eating with his wife, and she left him alone, but she saw him, and actually, yeah, and uh, she was kind enough to leave him alone, which I'm sure he would have appreciated, but uh, it was um, it was great. So who was this uh, uh, science guy who was doing the the show? I'm actually I'm trying to look up right now. We're going to look at the uh, descriptions of all this stuff. Well, I'm looking at all the the science guests right now, so I'm wondering which one of these guys it was that was doing. It this. was one of these guys or girls. There's two two ladies here who were. Uh, Carolyn Cox. And it was a man. It was a man. Ah, okay. Which I, one was it? Would have narrowed it down quite a bit more if there, if the lady, if it was a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I believe me. Hey, yeah, I would have loved for it to be a woman. <laughs> hey, Larry Hubble was there. Cool. I'm trying to find the description. Where is it? All right. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, uh, you get any other stories? Yes, I do. Uh, right, there was. I was just. Th- I was just thinking. I blank. I j- it just my mind went completely blank on what it was I was going to mention, and that really annoys the heck out of me. Um. All right. I guess I can just. I'll just talk about the other thing I was gonna say. Um. The uh, basically, so I was at the convention, Rever, and. Oh, okay, here. 
my one of my friends told me uh, the guy was Ray. Ray was a scientist. Ray was the scientist. The scientist that was there was his name was Ray. Supposedly, yes. Let's see. Do I see a Ray here? Yeah, Ray Villard. Ray Villard. Yes, that was him. That was him. Yeah, he he, he was great. You know, it was it was really funny and. He did some amazing stuff. It was really cool. cool. Um, but uh, no, so what was the? Uh, yes. Anyway, about the uh, what I was gonna say about it was that. Uh, so I was at the convention and. Were you? I, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Grin. Yes, I was at the convention. As a matter of fact. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, come on. Okay, you you were at the convention. All right, we'll yes, be, thank we'll, you. We're painting, we're painting, painting an image. Here. Painting a mental image. <laughs> okay, so I'm so visualizing I'm... you at the convention. Okay, what's on your left side? <laughs> so alright, so uh, <laughs> alright, so I I was going through the shops forever, and I came across um a. Uh, a booth with a on Saturday with a um, prop with some prop uh, sellers, whatever, some you know, prop masters or, or people who had been in contact with prop masters and such. And these guys have very supposedly very re uh, good reputation online um, for authentic props. Mm -hmm. And we found what, what I found another the thing they had this big um, what they had identified as far as I could tell um, was a. Uh, and you can, I actually have pictures of it on, pos I posted the pictures of it on the, uh, on Safe Sci-Fi. If you want to go bring one up for the, uh, for yeah, the pic what pictures. Are we, what are we talking about here? Um, it's, it's this big, um, stun rifle that was used in Sanctuary by Amanda Tapping. I think, uh, you, yeah, you bought it, that. I bought it. And it was ex it was actually it actually got a really I mean I'll just say it was over two hundred dollars but let me tell you uh, let me just tell tell you what it uh, what a great deal what a great deal I got um, the vendor said you know was assuming because it's based on it's a modified version of the Satidan um, Satidan uh, rifles in Stargate Atlantis and basically. Um, he is, that's what he, so he assumed it was from Stargate Atlantis. Uh, and you know, who, that could was just, he? uh, the, the vendor, um, the vendor uh, assumed it was from Stargate Atlantis. Yes. The guy, the guy who, uh, who, who's the prop collector there who ah, was selling. There's the picture. I believe this is the real prop. Yes. Well, that's not him. That happened. Let me, let me just, let me quickly say the rest of it. So basically, he thought it was from Stargate Atlantis, uh, just you know, one of the rifles maybe used by a bounty hunter in one of the episodes. Mm -hmm. You know, that would that would be cool if it was a one of a kind, you know, used for a bounty hunter. Well, my fa you know, we looked for the images to see the, find the scene because he had said that you know, as soon as he actually found the scene in the show, the scene in the show where this particular one was used, he was that the price would probably double to five hundred. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying to figure it out first to see how valuable, how special it really was. And um, my dad, God bless him, went home, and uh, after we had we we basically uh, reserve you know request request that they hold it for us um, anyway before we uh, were able to figure out where it was from, mm -hmm. and thanks so th thankfully they held it for us um, till till Sunday because we didn't have the cash with us. But uh, my dad looked it up. And real, was able to find a picture, uh, the, one of the ones, the the one that I got signed by Amanda Tapping, of her holding this. This is actually one, the only one, uh, you know, um, you made for Sanctuary. It was a modified one from Stargate Atlantis that appears, uh, made for Sanctuary, and it lights up. It's the only one that lights up, and it lights up, you know, the front barrels, and it's just, you know, incredible and. It was used by Amanda Tapping in one of the episodes, uh, season one, episode three, Fata uh, Fe 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 uh, Morgana. It was season one, episode three, and uh, he didn't. He the the vendor there didn't realize it hadn't known that it was used by Amanda Tapping. Imagine if he had known, 
and she was actually at this convention, it would have gone up in price a lot more. He would have gotten her autograph on it. He would have sold it for a lot more. I mean, she wasn't there, huh? No, so she was there. She was there. Yes, and that's what makes it such a great, made it such such an incredible discovery for me. Did you she get was it there. I got it, and I have pictures. I posted pictures of it too. I got we printed out, you know, on premium, you know, glossy paper, a picture of a man tapping oh, holding. There she, yeah. Got an autograph from the gun, on the gun. Got an autograph of her, um, uh, of the on on the picture of her holding the gun, and I got her to actually take a picture of. Um, got her to. She was willing to, and again for free. She's um, she's awesome. She did it for free. Uh, just to, just take a picture with holding it herself after she signed it, and then to top it, she would. And I asked her. Yeah, I did ask her. I said, I asked her, Miss Tapping. You know, would you? Can you tell me? Do you know if this is in fact the actual gun that you held that day, in the show? And she looked at it. You know, she said, yeah, she saw that lit up like that and looks like this is the only one that was ever made to light up. Um, they they uh, took out parts of the original gun and added in lights. Um, and she said it definitely feels like it's heavy, just like it did. It felt it feels just like it did when she held it in the show. It looks almost exact. It looks exactly the same to her. And she was willing to then go. And what, that picture of the I, I, I believe this is the real prop that is her. On the back of that picture that she signed, saying that she is, she believes that that, that this is in fact the real prop, authenticating real prop. it. Uh, I mean, that's the best she can do. I mean, she can't go and say for one hundred percent factually, right. but you know, that's still incredible that she was willing to say that. You know, she, you know, no, but no actress, is, you know, no big actor or actress is gonna claim something like that unless they're almost unless they're pretty sure. Right. And, you know. With all of this, yeah, you know, I just I feel very, very happy with my purchase today. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I also happened to get from the same vendor. I got a pair of uh, Stargate SG One uh, sunglasses. I also posted a picture of those two. Now these yes. um, uh, supposedly were used in the movie Stargate Continuum. Again, and the only person I can think of who would wear these is Richard Dean Anderson. He always has sunglasses in the show. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch Continuum, but. Uh, this is all just really awesome. Um, now the f other funny thing that I, I figured I'd share with everybody, at least uh, if, if I don't share anything else, this is, I figured I would, I came across, you know, I was looking at the vendors and I came across one vendor with a lot more of the, some older stuff from Star Trek and such very sci-fi. Hmm. And he had what look he, he had some. Very nice, uh, this like what looked like almost like a manuscript with some very nice calligraphy, and it is apparently the holy scripture of Trek, of Star Trek. In the beginning, uh, when Jing created the concept, the series was without <laughs> form, and darkness covered the the idea. Idea. <laughs> then Jean said, "Let there be space." The final frontier, and there was. <laughs> uh, as I posted both pictures of both pages on the on the uh, Facebook page, and I've read through it. It was it is so funny, and it's just it's fantastic. I loved it. Um, you know, thus the Federation came and the Klingons followed the first day. You know, let there be. A <laughs> um, oh. And there's this. This line is one of my favorites. Then Gene said, "The crew needs leaders to get into plot complications and give them a purpose." So Gene <laughs> created a captain and called him Kirk, the hunk. The hunk. <laughs> <laughs> then Gene created a doctor called McCoy and gave him two lines to say over and over again. Um, Lastly, Gene created an what alien. Was, what was his two lines? Um, Jim. Uh, he's dead, Jim. Oh, he's dead, Jim. <laughs> and uh, and then his various uh, ver uh, various different versions of um, damn it, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a fill in the blank here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I love this. I love this. This 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 uh. <laughs> 
this holy this holy scripture of Trek. It's it was two dollars fifty cents. Okay, I mean it was it is. Other than this, other than this rifle, th this was the I think in my opinion had to be the best in, uh, money I spent at the entire convention. <laughs> mm. it, it was fantastic. It's, it's it's so funny. Looks like it was handwritten. Is that correct? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was printed because he had several. Ver he had he had a bunch of copies there. The original may have been handwritten, but the one I have is. It lo yeah, it's been printed. Um, it, I, I, I just, I mean, I'm not religious, but I mean, I've heard this, I've heard Genesis and everything, and I just hearing this, of course, Genesis from Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, the Genesis weapon. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it, I, I love this. It, it, it is just so funny. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, this convention was awesome. You know the. I don't actually have any so pictures. If, if anyone wants to read that or see these things, you can go to the Save Sci-Fi Facebook page. That's uh, Facebook.com/slash Save Sci-Fi. Uh, S A V E S C I F I. And I just there's I just... some pictures posted up there with all these things that we're talking about. No, I I just remembered one thing that was really I mean touching and then and then a funny one, uh, Eddie McClintock. I don't know. I grin. Have you ever watched Warehouse Thirteen? No, I haven't. <laughs> he plays Pete Latimer in Warehouse Thirteen, uh, one of the main characters. Okay. And unfortunately, Warehouse Thirteen, of course, was canceled after next year. But he he was so funny. Um, he uh, one of my I have a. Uh, some friends, a couple that I met last year at Shore Leave, and uh, they um, and they told me I caught I saw them uh, all three days. But you know they told me I think it was what Saturday about something that Eddie McClintock did for them. Uh, they had a friend who was going to come, but he got really sick a week before the convention and he couldn't make it. And so and they told him that and uh, he they wanted him to make out a picture to him or whatever you know. And he said, "Go ahead, give him a call." And he took, and they called him up, and then he took the phone, and he said, "Hey, bud, how are you feeling? I heard you couldn't make it to the convention." And apparently, their friend was just just sput spl sputtering and just like, I "Is this Eddie McClintock?" <laughs> and he, it was fantastic. He, you know, he spent he took four or five minutes to talk to the guy. Um, yeah, he he's such a fantastic guy. Then the then when I was waiting when I was waiting to get his uh, autograph and a picture with him. Uh, there was this, uh, he was talking to a guy in front of me and, um, and the guy was telling Eddie all about his ex-girlfriend who had left him for another guy who had loved, and the ex-girlfriend, I mean, he loved Eddie McClintock too, but his ex-girlfriend really, really loved him. And so what Eddie McClintock did, he did two things. He decided to spontaneously just draw, make a drawing on the, on the tablecloth, of course, which is now worth, worth money. <laughs> And he autographed it, and he had the guy take a picture of it with his cell phone so that he could send it to his ex. And then he also took a picture with the guy, with one of, and gave him one of, uh, uh, either gave him or one way or another, he ended up with one of his custom designed, Eddie McClintock's custom designed Warehouse 13 T-shirts, and and he took these pictures with him so that he could get back at his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he has such a great personality and such. Uh, so did Brent Spiner and them. Yeah, I I got a combo picture with Brent Spiner, Saul Rubinick, uh, and Eddie McClintock. And Saul Rubinick uh, went and as they were they're saying, "You guys ready?" And they said one, two, and and uh, Saul Rubinick was like, "Legs up!" And they all and they and all three of them just stuck their legs up in the air, and and we all joined them. And so all of our legs, one of our legs is just. It stuck stuck them in the air at all, all of us. It's really it, they were they were all so funny. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> it's just really funny. I, what are you going over a cattle guard? <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I mean, they they were they, they're all fantastic. I love I love the stars. The only the only star that I've met that I didn't really appreciate their personality. Um all the time, I wasn't completely impressed with them, was LeVar Burton. Uh, that was last year. He, um, he, he didn't, 
yeah, he could have. I asked him some his opinion on a few things, and not only just in private, but yeah, you know, during one of his sessions, and he just you know he's just like yo, how the heck would I know? I'm not a producer or a director. You know, I'm asking him you know w- yeah whether or not he thinks it's time for a new Star Trek season again series again. You know, anybody can answer that. I think it's time for a new Star Trek series. He just he didn't respond fa- favorably to it, shall I say? Sounds like he's just tired. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it was the end of a long day, but still, yeah, I would have appreciated a bit more. But otherwise, every celebrity I've met has had such a great personality. You know, Jonathan Young last year, I, I, I caught find, a... I find when people give those kinds of answers, they're either A, just tired and want to <laughs> make somebody else miserable, or B, they're hoping that somebody will ask them a different question, and they're really tired that nobody's asking the right questions so that's just in my humble experience I, I, I i'm sure you're right i think lavar burton was really hoping that somebody would talk to him about something that he's really interested in and nobody ever said anything about it so he just kind of got upset about it probably yeah you're probably right i mean he he did seem a little exasperated with all the other questions too you know a lot of them were a few of them were were somewhat repetitive and you know, uh, some of them seemed kind of unusual questions. You know, weren't questions that, you know, he really seemed to want to answer. But, yeah, everybody has their good days. When it comes to conventions, though, the guys who I've I've listened to who give the best answers to the stupidest questions are, uh, and, and this isn't sci-fi, this is game-related, but uh, the Rooster Teeth guys from the Rooster Teeth podcast and Rooster Teeth Productions. I don't know if you know anything about them, Red vs. Blue and stuff, but... uh, I know of Red vs. Blue. I've seen a very, very, very little bit of it, but it's funny. (laughs) Yeah, these guys, the guys from that whole series, when somebody asks a bunch of stupid questions, they always have the best answers, and it's always hilarious. It's hard to do that. These, I mean, with these guys, they do it all the time. They they talk about stuff that just off the wall stuff uh, in their podcast, and they they make jokes about off the wall stuff. You know, when it comes to Lavar Burton, he's probably not had that kind of experience. Has he ever done any stand up comedy? I don't think so. I mean, he, I know he did, of course. Yeah, the Next Generation. He also did. Um, re, he also did. He's also yeah, the the guy from Reading Rainbow. Yeah, yeah. Um, otherwise, I don't know much about what he's done. I think he did Roots. Yeah, he was in Roots. Yeah, I, I nothing. I don't think he did anything in particular. Yeah, so uh, comedy wise, but uh, yeah, it sounds to me he was just in a bad mood. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, complain too much about it. I, I, I just, I was just, you know, sharing my experience. But uh, I mean, his speech. He 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 was kind of. He was pretty funny. Uh, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, I mean, all the, all, pretty much all these celebrities seem to have great personalities. Shatner, of course, was just like, come in, take the picture, get out. Come in, get your autograph, get out. He was, well, he apparently, I heard he was trying to do 400, he ended up doing 600 auto, uh, photo ops. 600 in less than an hour. Yeah, and that's the reason why. There's, a, there's 600 people that got their photo ops because they were pushed along. Now, if he was, you know, nice to everybody and and talked to yeah. him and and you know, congenial, all about, then maybe only a hundred people would get their photo ops, and then there'd be five hundred people going, man, why did he have to talk so long to that other guy? You know, people are selfish. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. A lot of a lot of times, you know, these 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 actors and whatnot. They, they've got so many, uh, what do you want to call it, the demands on them. It's like you got to, you gotta, at some point, you got to put your foot down and say, enough of this garbage, just move on, go to the next thing, you know? I can only imagine what William Shatner's got to go through to get yeah. 600 people photo ops. Yeah, and yeah, is I was yeah, and I heard originally he was trying to do four hundred. He ended up doing six hundred supposedly in in a, in, a, in a little bit less than an hour. 
So he, he beat his his uh, his goal. Yes. Goal. Yeah, that's good. that's good. He was just sitting in a chair, basically had people come in, stand next to him, take picture, and then shook. Yes, yeah, and he did. He shook our hands. You know, he, he at least did that. He said, "Nice meeting you," and yeah, have a good day. That's, and that's then that's an hour of smiling at people that you yeah. you've never met before, and <laughs> pretending like you're so happy to see them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Eddie McClintock, yeah, and the rest of them, they all also were very, very smiley and everything. But, I mean, of course, to, yeah, you got to give him the credit, you know, no, no, ins- not trying to insult Shatner or anything. He is old compared to them. He is much older, so, yeah, it's going to be tiring. No, this, I think this is not a, an insult. This is actually just the opposite. He is older, but he managed to beat that record. Oh, that's that's true. He that is true. To do six, he managed to get 600 photo ops done. In an hour, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, no, he, uh, his line, the line for him was out the door, down two hallways, then down the flight of stairs. That was his line. Yeah. Wow. For his first photo op, I thankfully was able to, by waiting for an hour right next to where he's gonna do his autograph, get into the first. Yo, know, fifty people for their signature. Oh, so you got his good side. Oh yeah, for his autographs, yes. <laughs> when you're the for his si- autographs. Could you imagine when you're the six hundredth person in line and oh. you're the six hundredth person to get a photo shoot sh- op with <laughs> William Shatner. Oh, we were far back in the be? <laughs> Well, we were actually we were around the middle for the photo op, but for the autographs, I was able to get in the we were able to get in the you know like I said, the first 50 people. Now, autographs is where it's really, that's where you really want to be on his good side, I'd say, because, you know, photo ops just, he just need you know, he just needs a smile to take a picture. That's that. Yeah, done. Yeah, the autograph is where you actually at least have, you know, 30 seconds to a minute while he autographs it or whatever to say, to say, to say anything. And that's when you want him to answer nicely. And we got in right away and, you know, we got to shake his hand again. So, <laughs> I mean, but yeah, I gotta say, you know, Amanda Tapping's, what? Amanda Tapping and Neil Grayston, uh, their autograph line at the end of today and yesterday were ridiculously long because they were giving free autographs. Um, so it was just, free it was, autographs. it was, yes. Free? Why do you say free? They were, they were free. Well, I mean, they sell, As a, these people are selling their autograph. Oh yeah, these celebrities are selling them. I mean, Shatner's photo op was eighty. His autograph was seventy-five. Oh really? It was expensive. I mean, Amanda Tapping and Neil Grayston, basically, they did on a Saturday and Sunday, they, they did a combined free autograph session. So if you have a badge, so if you have paid for the convention, and um, then you get one free autograph per badge per day. So, I mean, if I, and I, if I had felt like waiting on Saturday, I could have gotten two signatures from both of them, you know, total. I could have gotten four free signatures, but I didn't feel like it the first day. And... <laughs> and that was the day that the tickets were sold out for the convention that day. Sundays weren't sold out, and it was still took 45 minutes to an hour to stay to stand in that line. It was ridiculous. Um, I'm, just, it cost- I'm just flabbergasted that they would that they're charging for for. It. You know, I can understand charging for a speech or something like that, but charging for your own autograph. I mean, the only person who charged for a speech was Shatner. The rest of them don't charge for for their talks. Yeah, you just go in, you sit in oh, the so big the group. Way around. They charge for oh, their yeah. autographs, but they don't charge for their talks. Nope, because uh, nope, they let, they encourage people to come in, you know, to their talks. You know, they can come up to the microphone, and ask questions. Uh, but no, their autographs. They, whew, I mean, Amanda Tapping's were forty dollars, uh, mm-hmm. without um, you know, separate from the free one, which was forty bucks. Um, but so how many autographs do you think you can do in an hour? Depends on how much time you're talking to the people. And forty dollars per autograph. That's like a few thousand dollars an hour. Well, that's the thing. She, of course, was giving free autographs. Right. She gave free autographs to everybody in that line, unless they wanted more than one. If you only wanted one autograph, all you had to do was, and she was offering prints. She she gave, she had pictures of herself. Yeah, she had various pictures of herself. You know, in either Stargate or you know Sanctuary, etc., um, or herself wrapped in an American flag, mm-hmm. otherwise seemingly nude. Her in, in an American flag. That's that. 
<laughs> but uh, oh, she, those those she was selling those for five dollars. You could buy one of those for five dollars, and she signed any or and you could get those signed for free, or you could bring whatever you wanted, and she'd sign it for free. And one 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 free autograph per person per day, and it was literally um out the door into this little courtyard, up the stairs, you know, into this restaurant, like diner, and then ar- around the outside of the restaurant, mm. almost coming back out to the courtyard. And my, I was one of the last numbers called. It, they, it went up to the up to the twelve hundreds, and then. And I was fourteen hundred, and then after the twelve hundred, they call all numbers because you're at the end. And so I was at the end of this line, and she started signing at five. I was in that line until seven fifteen. <laughs> the she, convention ended at six. Did you? You did. You did get her signature. Oh yeah, I got her signatures, and, and she was very when, nice. When she was signing it, she said something to you. Oh yeah, she was very, very nice. She, uh, she, yeah, you know, she was able to keep nice the entire time. Yeah, she, like I said, she uh, looked at the, she looked at the rifle. She, yeah, you know, she let, me, she gave me, a, she took a picture of oh, it for yeah. free. Oh yeah, what am I thinking? She, you got your your rifle signed at that time, and she. Yeah, and she also piece. certified it, or, you know, or at least confirmed its authenticity, all that stuff. She did that, and she took a picture with the rifle for free. You know, she probably picked up that rifle and was thinking, "Wow, I remember that episode where I did this and I held this rifle." That, yeah. And this this stranger brought me this prop, this memory, and and just brought this memory to me. I don't even know this guy from Adam, <laughs> but brought me this prop that I used a long time ago in an episode a long time ago, and here it is. That that's pretty cool. I mean, if you look at the picture of her on, on that I posted on Facebook with the gun, I mean, she she's stunning. I mean, she has she has her brilliant smile on and everything. It, it, she was just so friendly. Yeah. Oh, and I, I guess you should probably bring up, um, just for the record, or ever since we're recording it, uh, the picture of um, of our panel. Uh, forgot it completely forever. That if you haven't, I don't. Yeah, I'm not complete. I'm not always looking at the live stream, but. There's a picture of um, Sal, Eugene, and I holding our Save Sci-Fi poster. Yep. Standing, you're right after the panel. Here we go. You know, he, yeah, they were. Uh, we had a great time. You know, I loved getting to meet the two of them. So, you know, if if they listen, uh, hopefully they'll be listening to this later on. And uh, so just let me just say, they were we're great gonna, we're company. We're gonna see both you and them on, in the video that you did. So that's yes, cool. that's true. Um, however, for, unfortunately, we're out of time. All right. So thank you, everybody, for coming in and listening to the wrap-up from Shore Leave 35. Uh, this is the Save Fi... <laughs> <laughs> this is the... <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> this is, I'll say it. This is the Save Sci-Fi podcast. Thank you very much Next for next time. Us. Next Yes, and next time we'll be having cast... Anvar, uh, from you know, he he voices Dalton in Halo Four, uh, the assassin in Assassin's Creed Revelations, and he's going to be in Nobility. All right, so, we're looking forward to that. Yes. Cass Anvar will be on the next podcast. Uh, that's next week, by the way. I believe so. Yeah, it's next week. All right, thank you very much for joining. Have a great one, and uh, yes. I I gotta say this, uh, please. If you're listening to the podcast, go to iTunes and give us a five-star review. That would be wonderful. That would help us out tremendously. And as always, stay creative. It's good for you. See you, Michael. See you, Gren. See you, guys.